a mindset that looks at reality like this, which is, you could say, more like an ego perspective, seeing reality out there, to this, which is uh, seeing the system in a way that includes yourself, seeing yourself through the eyes of another. And when we go through this shift from here to here on the level of the individual, that's what we call awareness or mindfulness. And when we do that on the level of a group in communication, uh, from here to here, we call that a shift from debate to dialogue. So dialogue is not people talking to each other. Dialogue is really making a system see itself. Where does that, and that's, as I said before, that was kind of my third principle. That's really where, when I work with practical systems, where the added value comes in. That's where the consciousness of a group is shifting. When you make a system sense and see itself, what are practical methods of doing that? So this is kind of one thing you see, it's called like 3D mapping. You map the current system and then you um, look at it through a structured process of questions and you get all the different voices out and then you change it towards the emerging future. Here, this was kind of the, uh, all the business unit leaders from the Alibaba group. So like a bunch of different companies that work as an ecosystem, uh, 30, 40 people in the room. So we have like just um, a different bunch of tables. This is in Brazil, 150 people in the room. So we have more tables and then make people share across tables. So you begin to see the shared patterns across tables. This is a different method that's, um, that we developed at the Presencing Institute, which may be really the most important contribution we have made for um, the um, social change, um, which is called social presencing theater, because it's um, very effective in mapping multi-stakeholder meetings and then making a system sense it see itself and you know making visible structural violence kind of and the, the less visible dimension of systems change and the blockages and making that visible to the entire system so it so it's like a blending uh, probably some of you uh, know the constellation work so it uh, uh, uses elements of that, elements of social science theater, and elements of, of mindfulness and embodied knowing. Um, so this guy here is a banker from Indonesia. They are mapping one of the biggest multi-stakeholder processes. But the role he plays is Mother Earth, right? So the three divides are always represented in these gatherings by bringing in the, the voice of nature, the voice of the future, and the voice of the excluded groups. Um, this is using the same method uh, at Lakeside University, founded by Jack Ma, kind of with um, entrepreneur owners, um, uh, owner and you know, owner CEOs um, of uh, Chinese companies a few weeks ago. So you can use these methodologies so where the, each company was represented with their top three people and then they make each participate in each other's cases kind of do multi-stakeholder mapping there um, and financial the biggest fintech company in the world um, who by the way succeeded in uh, making 220 million chinese customers participate in reforestation activities through end forest the app um, doing so how in this case this is kind of the third method here which is simply learning journeys sensing journeys so they the team the top 30 people of their company spent like a week basically in a very detailed way understanding and feeling and interviewing the entire business ecosystem that they have in two different countries in, in, in Southeast Asia Philippines and Indonesia and then they came to get so three days for that and then two days um, synthesizing that in um, Singapore and based so so it is embodied knowing so they felt what all the stakeholders of the business ecosystem in these countries feel like and understood their perspectives and then from that um, uh, sensing activity they moved into having a very different conversation with each other about where they wanted to take their, 
globalization strategy. So last point here is um, how does systems thinking really apply to the evolution of systems? And what I would see is basically the same um, structure of uh, evolution of systems change uh, across all major systems that uh, I have been working with. And it's moving through the following three stages, kind of from input and authority centric, so like in healthcare and learning, traditional teacher or doctor centric systems. That's the past. Present is this, output and efficiency centric, so evidence-based medicine, or uh, teaching for testing, right? AKA bulimia learning, fast in, fast out, which of course is the opposite of real learning, which gets us to um, um, the good hospital and the good school, right? Learner-centric and patient-centric. Is that the future? I don't think so. I think the future is yet something uh, different. Um, in health, it is not patient-centric medicine, but it is strengthening the sources of well-being and health. So uh, moving away from you know, reacting to the health issue symptoms to really uh, strengthening the deeper sources. And in learning, of course, it is kind of activating a more whole person, whole systems approach to learning, integrating head, heart, and hand. Farm and food, same thing, traditional farmer centric, industrial agriculture, the mother of half of all our ecological problems. Organic agriculture, that's a step forward. It's reducing negative footprint. Yet it's not the future because in the future, it's really about increasing the positive footprint in terms of healing planet and people. Finance, you can do the same thing, traditional, Wall Street, impact investing, right? Which is nice, but not really addressing the deeper systems issues, which would be yet something else. And the evolution of corporate responsibility, same thing. Alleviating projects, corporate practices, business innovation. Now, say I have an electric car and all these nice things, but does that address the real root issues of sustainable mobility? Not at all. So it's, uh, that's yet kind of something uh, different that needs to be um, uh, developed. How does that relate to the classroom? So the traditional uh, approach was, well, transformative learning experiences you can only do in small groups. And um, that's also what I thought. And then three years ago here at MIT, I got the possibility to move my class, which is called ULAB here at Sloan, to, um, to this platform, which resulted in a user group of now 120,000 participants. Well, all of them, of course, are active, so don't get the wrong uh, impression. But it is like they have formed communities in places around the world, kind of significantly. We have more than 1,200 on our website, but many hundreds that are still active. So it really activated a global innovation ecosystem, right, of communities that have a, um, a life uh, way beyond the end of the course. And um, so that really, this phenomenon, kind of activating this kind of ecosystem that was already dormant there before, really brought up this idea of, uh, that I uh, you know, suggested at the end of the, uh, the paper that was sent around, uh, the, the little blog, um, to, um, to, of the Society Transformation Lab, which is, really the idea to create like a prototyping infrastructure. So it's a, it's, it's a point, it's a part two from ULAB. ULAB is really for individuals connecting to your deeper source of knowing. The societal transformation that is really for teams moving your idea into action and real world impact. And we are now addressing some of the key challenges and we are now, uh, um, talking with a whole bunch of partners, including the UN, Teach for All, Ashoka, and so on and so forth, uh, to really bring together a, a broad uh, coalition of um, organizations and networks that work together around this key issue, basically uh, implementing the Sustainable Development Goals at scale um, by 
uh, and then creating a parallel track at university is kind of uh, that help uh, students to participate, to connect to these initiatives and to participate and um, uh, you know, uh, learn how to engage with the um, new methods and tools of uh, movement building, which are in part digital and in part related to really offline um, social technologies like deep listening kind of in circle work where we can um, activate the more deeper human dimension that is uh, required um, uh, in change. So that's basically, that's uh, like a, a big picture uh, fly over here. So let me stop this and um, move from here into the uh, conversation. Sorry, it was probably a little bit much, a little, but um, that's a little bit, um, I guess coming back to my original question, how to turn the classroom into a place that allows students to participate and shape global movement building, that's um, where I think um, we, we have a real opportunity today with the new social technologies and the way we can connect with each other that I would love to explore and where this kind of societal transformation lab is just one of the avenues that could be used to make that more practical.